Welcome to our sports briefing program. Today, we've got a variety of exciting stories lined up for you. First up, Larry Bird has shared a touching statement on the passing of his former teammate and friend, Bill Walton. Bird expressed his deep sorrow and love for Walton, praising him as one of the greatest players of all time. Rick Carlisle also shared his memories, highlighting Walton's lasting impact on many lives. Walton, a two-time NBA champion and Hall of Famer, passed away at the age of 71 after battling cancer. Our hearts go out to his family and friends during this difficult time. Moving on to baseball, the Baltimore Orioles soared to an impressive 11-3 victory over the Boston Red Sox. Kyle Stowers led the charge with a stellar performance, going 3-for-5 with two doubles and four RBIs, while Ryan Mountcastle chipped in with three hits. Cole Irvin's five shutout innings sealed the deal for Baltimore, marking their fifth consecutive win. It was a tough day for the Red Sox, especially for pitcher Cooper Criswell, who allowed seven runs in just four innings. Finally, in another thrilling baseball showdown, the San Francisco Giants triumphed over the Philadelphia Phillies with an 8-4 win. Despite a shaky start from pitcher Blake Snell, the Giants' bats came alive, with Brett wisely delivering key hits that drove in crucial runs. The Phillies' defense faltered, committing three costly errors that contributed to their loss. Taiwan Walker struggled on the mound, allowing six runs in six innings. The Giants' victory underscores their resilience and offensive prowess. Please stay tuned for the detailed coverage of these stories and more. Yahoo US, the NBA community was struck with sorrow on Monday as the legendary Bill Walton passed away at the age of 71 after a prolonged battle with cancer. Walton, a two-time NBA champion, was celebrated for his remarkable career, including a pivotal role in the Boston Celtics' 1986 championship win. Larry Bird, Walton's former teammate and close friend, shared a heartfelt statement expressing his deep loss and admiration for Walton describing him as a joyous presence and one of the greatest players of all time. Bird's sentiments were echoed by Indiana Pacers coach Rick Carlisle, who also reminisced about the invaluable memories and camaraderie shared with Walton during their time with the Celtics. Walton's legacy is immortalized in the Basketball Hall of Fame and through his numerous accolades, including a Finals MVP and League MVP. Yahoo US, Rick Carlisle, now the head coach of the Indiana Pacers, fondly recalled a personal story involving Bill Walton that highlighted Walton's generous spirit. Before Carlisle became a coach, he played for the Boston Celtics alongside Walton, where they won the NBA championship in 1986. Carlisle shared how Walton helped him impress his now wife, Donna, on their first date by arranging VIP tickets to a show. Walton's advice and influence extended beyond the court, as he continued to support Carlisle and his players through their playoff struggles. Carlisle's anecdotes paint a picture of Walton as a larger-than-life figure who left a lasting impact on everyone he encountered. The NBA world mourns the loss of Walton, but his legacy lives on through the stories and memories shared by those who knew him best. Associated Press, in a dominant performance, the Baltimore Orioles triumphed over the Boston Red Sox with an 11-3 victory, led by Kyle Stowers' three hits and career-high for RBIs. The Orioles' offensive surge included a two-run triple from Cedric Mullins, and they capitalized on a shaky outing from Boston's Cooper Criswell. Meanwhile, Cole Irvin delivered five shutout innings, bolstering Baltimore's rotation amid injuries. The Red Sox's struggles continued, losing their third game out of four overall. In other MLB action, Joe Ryan's stellar pitching helped the Minnesota Twins edge out the Kansas City Royals, while the Toronto Blue Jays snapped a three-game skid with home runs from George Springer, Bo Bichette, and David Schneider. The Cincinnati Reds extended their winning streak to four games, and the Milwaukee Brewers celebrated a dramatic win over the Chicago Cubs in Craig Council's return to Milwaukee. The Washington Nationals, Colorado Rockies, and San Francisco Giants also secured victories, showcasing the unpredictable and thrilling nature of baseball. Associated Press reports that the Seattle Mariners have placed second baseman Jorge Polanco on the 10-day injured list due to persistent hamstring issues. Polanco, who recently returned to the lineup after missing seven games, felt his hamstring tighten again during Sunday's game against Washington. Mariners general manager Justin Hollander admitted that the team should have initially placed Polanco on the injured list. Polanco, who struggled at the plate this season with a .195 average, is expected to undergo an MRI but is anticipated to be ready in about two weeks. To fill Polanco's spot, the Mariners recalled infielder Ryan Bliss from AAA Tacoma, who immediately joined the starting lineup against Houston. Bliss, acquired from Arizona in a trade, was leading AAA with 28 stolen bases. Additionally, Seattle transferred Sam Haggerty to the 60-day injured list after he suffered a torn Achilles tendon. Yahoo US details how the San Francisco Giants managed an 8-4 win against the Philadelphia Phillies, 
despite struggling performances from pitcher Blake Snell and some unfortunate injuries. Snell, who has been searching for consistency, managed to strike out three Phillies hitters in the first two innings but ran into trouble in the third. He allowed a two-run home run to Kyle Schwarber and eventually left the game after four innings with a total of 90 pitches. The Giants also faced a scare when Lamont Wade Jr. injured his left hamstring sliding into second base. Despite these setbacks, Brett wisely shone brightly, collecting his third consecutive multi-hit game and driving in two key runs. Wisely, who started at shortstop, has been batting .450 with one home run and six RBI in 20 at-bats this season, earning praise from manager Bob Melvin. In another report by Yahoo US, the Philadelphia Phillies suffered their worst defensive game of the season in the loss to the Giants. Starting pitcher Taiwan Walker continued to struggle, allowing six runs over six innings and failing to find consistency with his splitter, which has been his best pitch. The Phillies' defense faltered with three errors, two by Alec Bohm at third base and one by second baseman Whit Merrifield, all leading to runs. Despite an early lead thanks to a two-run homer by Kyle Schwarber and a triple by Edmundo Sosa, the Phillies could not maintain their advantage. They committed several defensive mistakes, including a misjudged throw by Johan Rojas, which allowed the Giants to double their lead. The Phillies, now 38-17, will look to bounce back with ace Zach Wheeler on the mound in the next game. Yahoo US reports that Michigan State University will host three-star tight end Jaden Savory from Orchard Lake, Michigan, for an official visit this weekend. Savory, a 6 feet 6 inches, 225-pound hybrid tight end, has been gaining momentum on the recruiting trail since receiving an offer from Michigan State in January. Ranked as the number 40 tight end in the 2025 class by 247 Sports, Savory has also received offers from nearly 20 other schools, including BYU, Duke, Kansas, Wisconsin, and Penn State. In addition to his visit to Michigan State, Savory has official visits lined up for Duke, Kansas, and Wisconsin. Yahoo US also covers the emotional return of Craig Council to Milwaukee as the manager of the Chicago Cubs. Council, who spent nearly two decades with the Brewers as a player, manager, and front office member, faced a mixed reception from Brewers fans, who booed him during his tribute video and throughout the game. Despite the boos, Council took it in stride, emphasizing the unpredictable turns of life and his desire to embrace new challenges. Council's departure from Milwaukee, especially to a rival team like the Cubs, has stirred strong emotions among fans. However, his former colleague and friend, Brewers manager Pat Murphy, highlighted the lasting respect and impact Council has had on the Brewers and their community. In another Yahoo US story, John Onik discusses the upcoming UFC 302 fight between lightweight champion Islam Makachev and challenger Dustin Poirier. Makachev, with a record of 25-1, is heavily favored, but Onik believes Poirier, a plus 425 underdog, has a fighting chance. Onik praises Poirier's resilience and experience, noting his ability to bounce back from losses and his powerful striking ability. However, he also points out Poirier's past struggles with grappling, particularly in his title losses by submission. Onik suggests that Poirier's best chance lies in capitalizing on his striking early in the fight to avoid being taken to the ground by Makachev. The Toronto Star, in a thrilling game, the San Francisco Giants held off the Philadelphia Phillies 8-4, thanks to Brett Wisely's pivotal hits. Wisely doubled in a crucial insurance run in the sixth inning after an earlier RBI single, and Patrick Bailey's sacrifice fly in the fifth inning gave the Giants a lead they wouldn't relinquish. Blake Snell, the reigning NL Cy Young Award winner, remains winless since joining the Giants despite a strong start. The Phillies made a valiant effort, with Kyle Schwarber hitting his 10th homer and Edmundo Sosa tying the game, but the Giants' timely hitting and solid bullpen work secured the victory. Australian Broadcasting Corporation Australia's campaign at Roland Garros took a dramatic downturn as Max Purcell failed to convert six match points in his first-round loss to Henri Squire. Purcell, who even tried an underarm serve on one of his match points, ultimately lost in a five-set thriller. His agonizing defeat left the Australian contingent winless after two days, with Daria Seville's earlier loss marking the first time since 1997 that no Australian woman advanced to the second round. Despite the heartbreak, Purcell remained defiant reflecting on the brutal nature of tennis and vowing to return stronger. Telegraph, letters to the editor highlighted various issues, from Labour's education policies to the state of Britain's infrastructure. One letter criticised Labour's plan to add VAT to independent school fees, arguing it would harm both state and private sectors and penalise hard-working families. Another lamented the poor condition of Britain's pavements, which pose a challenge for mobility scooter users. The discussion also touched on inheritance tax with one reader questioning the wisdom of leaving money for the state to waste. 
The letters offered a snapshot of public opinion on pressing social and political issues, emphasizing the diverse concerns of citizens. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.